Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A fire rips through several condos in Oakland County. Tonight, we're hearing from witnesses on what they saw. Thanks for joining us. I'm Will Jones and I'm Pamela Osborne. Firefighters got the call around five this morning at the Country Glen condos near 14 Mile and Northwestern Highway. Victor Williams talked to witnesses that described the tense moments inside. Well, the good news is that it looks like no one was hurt, but nevertheless, it was still a very devastating fire that has now displaced multiple families. It was a big inferno. You could feel the heat just radiating off of it. Charred remains are all that's left of this fire that broke out around 5.43 a.m. at Country Glen Condos in Farmington Hills. It really looked like something out of a movie, and the heat and stench, it was just, it was overpowering. Harrison Keiko's Jr. walks Local 4 through the breathtaking moments he realized his grandmother and uncle's home was engulfed in flames. It's absolutely terrible because uh, it happens so suddenly and you have no opportunity to prepare for it. And the worst part of this is the fact that you don't know when it's going to be resolved. His father, Harrison Keiko Sr., was amazed by just how quickly Farmington Hills firefighters made it to the scene. I couldn't believe how many fire trucks I saw and police squad cars and the fire was gigantic. I, I was astounded to see that and I couldn't believe it. And I was so worried that there were probably still some people inside, but fortunately it seemed like everybody was out. Unfortunately, multiple families must now find new places to live, being displaced in the fire that tore throughout the building. I was really saddened to see all the people that were outside because they were rushed out of the condos and some of them probably didn't have proper attire, meaning warmth because it was cold and it was chilly morning. And if there was anything else to show just how bad the flames were, look at all the water that was used to knock them out. The force of the uh, water pressure was pretty, uh, was at a level where it was knocking things off within the structure. And to the point where I thought it was maybe going to collapse because of how pieces were just falling away, you know, just big chunks. And another good thing is how the community came together during this time of need. Once those flames broke out, everyone was evacuated out into the cold weather. So other people that had the space in their homes allowed those people to come inside. Victor Williams, Local 4. Time now for another check of the weather and another round of snow. Are you surprised? Is uh, headed our way? Unfortunately not. Forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams joins us now. Kim, this round should be a little bit easier to manage, right? It should, and it's coming over a really long period of time. We've got it now, and we'll have it all the way through the day tomorrow, but more of a scattered pattern rather than a widespread snowfall that we saw on Friday. So as we start the work week, though, you will have to deal with a little bit of snow. And right now, we're going to zoom in, do a little street-level mapping for you. It's snowing in Canton, right along I-275, down to Plymouth, Westland, Wayne, all getting light snow. And you might have seen in that live shot there a little snow coming down also in Farmington Hills. Clouds and radar forecast. Well, you can see that we've got the snow moving across Lake Michigan. Now, this is lake enhanced snow, so it's very light. By the time it gets here, it just kind of fizzles out. But what you see back there in Green Bay, that's headed towards us for the day tomorrow. And we will pick up a little light accumulation anywhere between one to maybe two inches in most spots. Three would be the highest, but I think we're going to be more like one to two. 35 degrees tomorrow. Keep in mind, our normal high should be in the mid 40s, and we are just nowhere near it for the next couple of days. Returns Monday, that's the snow, and then the middle of the week, sunshine. But umbrellas ready for Friday as we expect more rain. Temperature trend, look at this temperature trend. Average high in the mid 40s, we're below average, and then right back up above average. Thursday and Friday, the high reaches 50 degrees. Well, if you want to keep up to date on all the weather in your neighborhood, now's the time to download the new Forewarn Weather app. You can check the new Exact Track 40 radar and hour by hour forecast whenever you want. It's free on both Apple and Android. Just search WDIV. New at 11, a Detroit police officer and a child are hurt after a crash. It happened this afternoon in the area of Hayes and Houston Whittier. That's on the city's east side. Investigators say officers were involved in a crash with another car. We're told both victims are expected to be OK. A Michigan State Trooper is out of the hospital after their patrol car was hit on I-696. It happened this morning as troopers were investigating a crash near the westbound ramp to Greenfield in Oak Park. Investigators say a driver was driving too fast, lost control and sideswiped another vehicle. That vehicle then hit the patrol car and a fourth vehicle. We're told the trooper is going to be OK. No one else was hurt. 
A stretch of the Southfield Freeway is back open after a crash leads to a freeway shooting. It happened around four in the northbound lanes at Linden. State police say two drivers got into an argument. One left the scene, then came back and opened fire. One person was hit in the arm. We're waiting for an update on his condition. Troopers shut down the freeway to search for evidence. We're told about seven shell casings were found. Over now to eastbound I-96 in Redford. That's where a pedestrian was hit and killed by a car. The accident happened around 3.30 this morning near Inkster Road. Police say they got a call about a shirtless man running across the freeway. Police say he was running from another vehicle and ran onto the freeway to escape. We're told just minutes after police received the first call, they received more calls about a man hit and killed on the freeway. Detroit police are asking for the public's help in identifying two shooting suspects. The shooting happened at a Sitco gas station on Woodward on Thursday night, March 2nd. Police say the suspect shot a 22 year old man as he walked out of the gas station. They say the suspects then fled in this white Chrysler Pacifica. We're told the victim was taken to the hospital. He has since been released. Police are asking anyone who recognizes the suspects to contact the Detroit police or Crime Stoppers. Former Vice President Mike Pence criticizing former President Donald Trump for his role in the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. Saturday, Pence spoke at the annual Gridiron Club dinner in Washington, D.C. He slammed Trump, saying Trump's reckless words endangered his family and everyone at the Capitol that day. Pence also said Trump was wrong for claiming that he had the authority to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Pence's comments widens the rift between the two men as they prepare to battle over the Republican nomination in next year's election. St. Patrick's Day celebrations have officially kicked off here in Metro Detroit. The 65th annual Detroit St. Patrick's Day Parade marched down Michigan Avenue in Corktown this afternoon. Pipe and drum bands, floats, clowns and colored guard units could all be seen. The parade is hosted annually by the United Irish Societies. Look, looks like a lot of fun. Sure does. Still to come, another round of storms is headed to flood ravaged California. What we're learning about new flooding expected to slam the state tomorrow. Bernie 101 with billionaire mortgage mogul and new Phoenix Suns owner Matt Ishbia. How are you an owner of the Phoenix Suns and the Mercury and you live in Detroit? When you buy a team for $4 billion as a report was reported. So what does that check look like? 